Hey, it's Jordan for Sick Podcast. We have real talk on tech with a pinch of D-minus comedy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We want to do a quick sick hit about OpenAI considers high price subscriptions to its chatbot AI preview of the information AI summit. So um, how much would you be willing to pay for ChatGPT every month? $50, $75? How about $200, $2,000? $2, that's the question facing OpenAI whose executives we hear have discussed high price subscriptions for upcoming large language models, such as OpenAI's reasoning focused Strawberry and a new flagship dubbed Orion. How much customers will to pay for the AI chatbot matters not only to OpenAI, but rivals offering similar products, including Google, Anthropic, and others. In early internal discussions at OpenAI, subscription prices ranged from 2000 per month were on the table, said one person with direct knowledge of the numbers, though nothing is final. We have strong doubts the final price would be that high. Still, it's notable detail because it suggests that the paid version of ChatGPT, which was recently on pace to generate $2 billion revenue annually, largely from $20 per month subscriptions, may not be growing fast enough to cover the outsized cost of running the service. Those costs include the expenses of a free tier used by hundreds of millions of people per month. So let's stop real quick. So let's say it was $2,000, which sounds like sensationalism. The question is, is, is adding more than $2,000 of value? And if it is adding more than two thousand dollars of the value for people, then yes, the question is simple: people will pay that price. Um, but are they saying two thousand dollars for a model that, instead of self-destructing by clicking through one concur expense page, it can go through two pages and almost partially fill out your expense report? Mm. It's got to be able to do the whole expense report end to end, or it's be able, it's got to be able to take on one of your workflows, or it's got to be able to handle a customer for you end to end something spectacular would make that 2000 um, work. But again, this is just hearsay. Um, and more advanced models to Strawberry and Orion may be more expensive to train and run than prior models. For instance, we reported that when given additional time to think, the Strawberry model can answer more complicated questions or puzzles than OpenAI's current models can. That additional thinking or processing time could be more computing power and therefore more cost. If that's the case, OpenAI may want to pass along some of those costs to customers. Correct. And there's also some questions where you don't really care that much. I mean, you don't really care much about the answer. It's more of a curiosity sake. There's other questions where mm, I'm doing research for a client or I'm betting the farm on this or this is for a deal. Yeah, I want to pay more money for this. Of course, high price would also mean OpenAI believes that existing white collar customers of ChatGPT will find these upcoming models a lot more valuable to their coding, analytics, or engineering work. The pricing discussion came uh, uh, come as the ChatGPT makers looks to raise billions of dollars in capital to make up for billions of dollars of losing per year. In line with other reports, we've heard existing investor Microsoft in the mix to put more cash into the startup, perhaps along with Apple and NVIDIA, and the Josh Kushner's Thrive Capital is looking to lead the new round, as the Wall Street Journal earlier reported. Well, those are all for strategic reasons. I mean, Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, they all have stakes in their own businesses to make sure OpenAI is successful, so they're going to give them money. Um, now, if they're losing all of money on ChatGPT, yes, it's they have great brand awareness and it's doing really well for them. Question is, what's the long-term plan there? It seems like OpenAI is, they're going after a lot of different markets at once. They're going for the consumer end of just people using ChatGPT for their own personal stuff. Then they're going for the enterprise end of me, I'm at work with a team. Um, then they're going for people who are just using the API. Um, then they're going into search, like all these different areas. And so... I wonder if they're going to try to focus on one niche and try and nail that really well. Um, Cohere said, you know, we're mostly just focused on the enterprise side and doing really well on that. We're not focusing on the consumer side. Um, and Anthropic was supposed to be mostly on the enterprise side, but reluctantly created Claude because they were getting beaten by um, ChatGPT. So, and, they're get, and they were not in the limelight anymore and they had to, they had to do it. So. Microsoft, Apple, and NVIDIA are already getting something valuable from OpenAI as business partners, so they have a motive to be associated with the fundraising. Their involvement could help convince other investors to help fill the startup's dwindling coffers. I contacted an OpenAI spokesperson to get their perspective on all this, but they had nothing, nothing to add. Um, whatever OpenAI decides to charge for upcoming AI service will influence what its rivals do with the product as well. So far, most model developers have settled on subscription business models that charge their chatbot users double digit amounts per month. A dramatic increase in OpenAI's pricing and reaction from consumers could change that. So yeah, again, it comes down to how much value are they going to be adding um, with this new service? If it's for $2,000, they're starting out there, but for $2,000, it's adding $20,000 of value to your organization. It's like a yeah, no brainer for them to do that. So a lot just comes down to is 
we need to see what the model performance is. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that that quick overview. Um, I got some content for you too. So um, if you're interested over here, we spoke to a gentleman who works for the company that helps you interview. It, it's an AI assistant that when you're in the midst of the interview, will provide you with suggestions and support and whatnot. Really interesting conversation. You check that out. And then we also did a bonus episode you can check out right here where me and Joe go into a deep dive about Ilya's um, new startup and how he's got a $1 billion valuation uh, or $5 billion valuation and a $1 billion check for basically vaporware. So we'll see how that goes. And then we'll also talk about how Microsoft Copilot is struggling for enterprise adoption. So check those two things out. And also, um, hope you have a great weekend. I will be in our Discord. Hit the join button to get access to it. Talk to you all later. Peace.